single body in the universe man today is a great day i'm recording this on a sunday i'm putting it out tomorrow which is a monday and i'm way too lit for it i'm so excited for life right now um you know what it is it's december which means it's christmas time and if you don't know what that means baby let me tell you it's the most wonderful time of the year and you know what i'm singing like i'm singing like an old white man in church because that's how we do it you ever notice that old white men in church they always do two things when they sing one they sing the baritone they sing real deep they don't sing anything else they just sing real deep baritone they don't want to sing alto soprano tenor eleven or they don't want to sing none of that they just want to sing baritone and number two is they always smile when they sing it don't matter what kind of song it is it don't matter how high the note is or how low the note is Every single old white man in church will smile the entire time that they sing. So let's talk about it's the most wonderful time of the year. This is how Brother Barton, the third seat from the stage, would sing it uh, during the worship service if he was doing songs like that. He would say, uh, Brother Bart, go ahead and do us a Christmas special. Can you go ahead and sing us a Christmas song? What would you like to sing, Brother Bart? Oh, if it's all right with you, I'll sing it's the most wonderful time of the year. Well, go ahead, Bart. Take it away. Okay. And he would look at his wife because every old white man in church dedicates every song to their wife. And then he would say, it's the most wonderful time of the year with yes and some scaring. And, and he would finish the song. Everything I, I've noticed ever since I've been, you know, in worship or a worship leader, you know, you look out across the congregation. There is always, always, always an old white man who sings while he's smiling. It doesn't matter if this is the most serious worship song, powerful, like an upbeat, slow, alter. It don't matter if there's just a pad on. My man is smiling the entire time. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations. And they always have some weird comment like, oh, can't do it like Jimmy Swagger or something, something weird. So, um, man, it is the most wonderful time of the year. And I'm actually, you know, I'm an adult now and I just bought a house and when I was a kid, I always used to tell my parents, oh, we need Christmas lights, Christmas lights, Christmas lights, Christmas lights. And I would make the tree stay on all night. And, you know, my dad would always say, so when you get your own house and you get your own electric bill, then you can start leaving the Christmas tree on. So when you get your own electric bill, then you can hang some lights up. So when you want to get your own electric bill, then you can leave every light in the bad gum house. So every time I come home from work, every light, and uh, you know what? Trace Hack, every light in the house on. And I always thought my dad was crazy. I was like, Dad, you're a Luna tick dog but you eat that you eat that raw tuna so you a tuna tick and i've always told him that dad you a tuna tick and then i became an adult i just bought my own house back in june and then i started getting these electric bills and i started you know i started thinking about christmas and then you know, during the summer, my electric bill was skyrocketed. And, you know, I've noticed that the more electricity I keep on, you ain't going to believe this, but the more electricity I keep on, the higher my electric bill. And I'll tell anybody that. I'll tell your grandma that. And I started thinking about Christmas, and I said, do I really want to put up Christmas lights? Do I really want to keep my tree on all night? You know, do I really want to do these things? Because I'm not just investing in joy. I'm also taking out my pocket. You know what I'm saying? I may be happy, but I'm going to have a little less, you know, money to run on this next month. You know what I'm saying? So it is the most wonderful time of the year. It's currently, what, December 13th, and I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to put lights up. But if I do put lights up, there's only like 12 days left until Christmas. So, and I have a I have a family member. His name is Zeke. That's how he says Christmas. He said Quimus. And you ever get him to say, he'll say, Macrimmer. You say, what, Zeke? What'd you say? Macrimmer. So that's what I started saying. And I'm very excited today. I have my wife in studio. I say studio. It's just my game room. Um, my wife is in here. And she hasn't been in here for a recording yet, but she's in here. And I'm so excited. You can't see her, but you can hear her voice. Honey, say hello. Hey. And she's in here. My dog's in here. But you can't see him, but you can hear his voice. 
So we're all in studio, and we're just uh, we're just had glad to be here. And um, man, I got a I got a lot to talk about. I've you know we didn't record an episode last week. Um, life's been crazy, and and for so because so, and so if so conjunction so I got a lot to speak about. I got a lot to talk about. And one of the things that's been on my mind heavily is. Um, basketball. And if you know me, you know I love basketball. I love any sport. I'm just competitive. And naturally, I don't know what it is about me, but I am very good at every single sport I ever played. And it don't matter if you know, it don't matter if you throw me in a in a car and you make me go 38 times around a track doing a left bad boy. I'll do NASCAR better than anybody. I'll do figure eight skating better than anybody. Chess, underwater basket weaving. I'll do anything you want to do better than you. But my buddy Ben Yeah, I'm coming for you. I'm coming to your house, knocking on your door, bringing your mail inside because I wanted to get wet on these rainy days. My buddy Ben got sprayed by me, yours truly, Corey Spencer, Social Security number JK. He got sprayed by me at that half-court line, that four-pointer. And here's the story about how it went. So we was going to this young adult Bible study called Overflow. My cupeth overfloweth. And we were going, that's kind of the premise behind the whole young adult Bible studies. You want your cup to there, thine for overflow. And we went to a game night, and we was playing out there, and it was a game night night, of course. Uh, can't be a game night day because that is, you know, phonetically incorrect. But we were out there, and it was a game night. We were playing five on five. Now, me and Ben are naturally competitive. Um, we're both competitive, so therefore, even though it was five on five, it was actually, somebody preach, one on one. One V one if you're a gamer. That's how gamers say. You ever play Call of Duty, you log on, and maybe you're in a, a party or a waiting room, and then you go in to play, you know, whatever those, I don't remember the setting, whatever it is, you go into play, and you're playing in there, and the kids always say, they get in an argument because the kid got killed, and they, they get on there, and they say, yeah, I killed you because I'm better than you, and then, you know, some little, you know, kid, maybe a different ethnicity than you are, will log on and say, 1v1 me. 1v1 me if you better than me then. If you really better than me, you got all them guns, you got that camouflage. 1v1 me. So even though it was one, you know, five on five, it was actually 1v1. Me and Ben were like staring at each other dead in the eye sockets, them corneas, the maize, the maize, the corns. We were staring at the corns the whole time. And it was a close game. Ben would come down, he would hit that tray. Um, I was doing a lot of layups because I saved my three-pointers for the end because that's usually when everybody starts washing is the end. The more you splash, the more you get that cash. Baby, no money was on the line, but figuratively speaking, phonetically, I was making more money than he was. So it was five on five. The score, Stormy is there. She'll tell anybody. The score was close. Like, it, you know, Ben was splashing. I'll give him credit where credit is due. There ain't no due date on the credit, but the credit is there, baby. Capital One, 3% annual percentage rate. I'll give him credit where the credit is due. He was splashing. You know what I'm saying? You would have thought that, you know, back in the day, you pay a dollar to get in the community swimming pool. That's what Ben was doing. He was jumping off that diving board, boy. He was that bad boy splasher. You know, that BBS, that bad boy splasher. And he was doing his thing. He was on the court. You know, his fiance was there. Um, now they're married. They got a little baby. Congratulations. Shout out to them. Uh, she was there. And, you know, he was impressing her, you know. You know, they were fiancéed up, you know, and then right when he was hitting them three, she knew, she knew without a shadow of a doubt that she was going to marry that man. He was out there doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? But he didn't know. <laughs> he didn't know that Steph Corey was out there, baby. He didn't know that Chef, Chef Corey with the baker's hat on was out there, baby. You heard of Steph Curry, you heard of his, you know, his third cousin, Steph Corey. And uh, speaking of cousins, you know, my family, I think they invented this thing called double first cousins. My dad would be talking about family members. He'll be, you know, he'll pull up a picture. And he'd be like, you yeah, look, Michelle, Michelle, look at old Daniel from back in the, you remember Daniel? We used to live across from him in that trailer park down there off of uh, Luetta Road down there. You remember Daniel? And he'll show my mom a picture of Daniel. Golly, Daniel got thick, boy. <laughs> Daniel got thicker than a snicker. And then he'll start talking, and he'll always say that. I'll be like, Dad, Dad, who's Daniel? Who's little Daniel, you know? And he'll say, son, you remember Daniel. Dan Daniel's your, your double first cousin. And he's always, you, you can bring up anybody. He'll see somebody on the news. It'll, you know, the 13 Eyewitness News will say, back to you, Charlie. And he'll say, Charlie, Charlie, Michelle, is that, 
Is that Charlie, Charlie? From back in the day, you used to live in that trailer park with us across from that McDonald's over there. Charlie? Look at Charlie. He's a newscaster. You ain't going to believe that. Charlie got fit. Charlie used to be running around with that little wiggle jiggle, but now he's, you know, he flecked up. And my dad, I'll be like, Dad, who's Charlie? And he'll be like, so you don't know who Charlie is, son? So you know who Charlie is. He's your double first cousin, son. And I'll say, Dad, explain to me what a double first cousin is. I ain't never heard of that in my life. A double first cousin. Isn't a double first two, you know, one on one, two doubles? One squared, one up. One squared might still be one, actually. But I'll say, Dad, who's that? He said, he's your double first cousin. I said, Dad, explain what a double first cousin is. He says, I'll tell you what a double first cousin is. So, old boy over here and his girlfriend, they walking around the street, you know, they doing their thing, and they meet old boy and that little, little person down there. And, you know, they go through their line, you know, they're doing it. And he'll, like, 30 minutes later, he'll say, and that's how are your double first cousin. And I'll say, Dad, what you're doing right now is what us young people call not making sense. You're not making sense, <laughs> Dad. Anyway, so me and Ben are out there, and he's shooting the ball. He's splashing, but he don't know that that Steph Curry's you know, double first cousin Steph Curry on the court. He don't know I'm there. I'm there, but, you know, I'm just doing layups. So he thinks that's all I'm capable of. But my capability is so much further than what he's aware of because I save the good stuff till the end, baby. I'm like a movie theater. You know what I'm saying? I say the good stuff to the end. The climax is going. The story's building. The story's building. The story's building. And there's usually a climax in the middle. And then it's, you know, you think about English and it's running back down. But that's not how I work. The whole movie is just a steady, a steady grab. And then I end on a climax, baby. That's what I do. I finish there. So we're going in the, in the, in the, the game is close. And Ben, me and Ben, we're being selfish. We're not passing it to our teammates. We don't care what's going on. We don't even care that we're at a young adult Bible study. Because now we're saying stuff that no good Christian would ever say. Ben's talking about my eyeballs, saying like I, I play like I'm Stevie Wonder. I'm talking about his broken in the half kneecap, walking around like Joe from Family Guy. Like we going off and off and off. And we're just, you know, just getting in each other's heads. Where I'm talking about his, you know, I'm talking about his, his ankles. And he's talking about my elbows, talking about Tommy John surgery. We're just in each other's minds, baby. We're doing it up. We're like each other's drugs, just going crazy. <laughs> And we're, we're keeping the ball. We're stealing. We ain't passing it to our teammates. It's 1v1, baby, as them little Chinese gamers say on the other end of the, of the Xbox. And which is 1v1. And then what happens is the game's close. Ain't no, ain't no shot clock, ain't no game clock, but it's close. I think we were playing to, to, to 15, and it was 13 up. And you know, if you play on the courts, you always play deuce. Win by two. Throw it up. Dos. So we're up there, and it's 13 up. Especially at Bull Salas University. You ever been to BSU? People always say, Corey, where do you go to school at? And I say, it depends on what school you're talking about. Because I go to BSU, Bull Salas University. That's where I, we, That's where everybody in New Caney go and play. Everybody in Porter, New Caney go play at Bull Salas University. Think they're still going to get picked up by some team. They think they're out there getting scouted. Hey, you, know, it, it, you know you're at Bull Salas Park is every time you go play, Here's the two things that will happen. Everybody shoots three-pointers, and they all argue for 38 minutes. That's Bull Salas University. So that's where we was playing at. And it's 13 up, win by deuce, up by dose. You know what I'm saying? 13 up. And we're playing to 15. And Ben, he comes down, and he shoots this three. And I'm like, oh, no, they just won the game. My, my girlfriend, no, we were married. I said, my wife's going to leave me. This is bad. This is bad news, man. And I got an apartment lease. I can't afford it by myself. She going to leave me. And he came and he shot it. And I said, it's over. It's done with. I'm going home. I'm a loser. I got to give it up. I can't play no more. This game ain't for me. And then it hits the rim and it bounces back. It hits the rim. It, bounces. it does not go in. He doesn't make it. And guess who the rebound goes to? What? It goes to me. I get the rebound. And now guess what? I'm not looking to pass it to any of my teammates. All I'm thinking about is Sports Center, baby. All I'm thinking about 2020, who got their cell phone out because they're about to record the greatest game winning shot of all time, daddy. So I'm not looking to pass it to my teammates. It's just 1v1, me and Ben. So I take the ball. It's my own little fast break. I'm taking my time. I ain't tripping about nothing. I know about, I, you know, you know you serious when you don't say nothing. You say N-U-F-F-I-N, nothing. I ain't tripping about nothing. And I start dribbling up the court. I'm eyeing Ben. 
I'm just going through my legs like, you know, like you made a player on, you know, NBA 2K21 and you made everything 99. That's what I look like, papa. And I'm just dribbling down in between my legs behind my back. And I come up on the half court line. Okay, this line has been in basketball for decades, years. Phonetically speaking, it's been here forever. And I come up on this half court line and I'm looking at it. And I look at Ben, and boy, my voice turns deeper than Josh Turner. And I'm saying, and I point at the half court line. Ben steps up on me. He's really like, he's realizing I'm serious about what's about to happen. He knows I can look anywhere on the court. I shoot from there, it goes in, no problem. So he sees me stare at this half court line, and he looks at me, and he steps up. He starts to play defense. Now I'm thinking, okay, I can't go backwards now. Because if I go backwards, that's a, that's a, that's a backcourt violation. Okay, BSU, we play by the rules, baby. No street ball out here. So what I do is I look at him. I come up like I'm gonna like I'm gonna rush in for that, you know, that 27 footer, whatever it is, that three point shot. And then he follows me. What I do is I pull back. You can picture this in your head. It's the most beautiful step back fader half court shot you've ever seen in your life. So I'm running. I'm running. I I pull back. And I go through my legs. Ben slips. He does not fall. He doesn't fall. I'm not going to do him like that. He does not fall. He slips. He kind of does like a little half splits. He didn't do the full splits. He was never in gymnastics. He's not, you know, his flexibility-wise, he's not there. So he does like a half split, and his body naturally springs back up. He's like, oh, you almost got me. I said, I'm about to get you. He said, no, you almost got me. I said, I'm about to get you. And I pull back. He slips. He steps up on me. I fake right. And I go left, like Troy Bolton in the High School Musical. I fake right and go left. Watch out. And I fake right. And I go. Dude, my dribbling was so nasty, you thought the high school marching band was coming up the street. You know what I'm saying? I was dribbling so much, so fast, that you thought the New Caney High School Spirit Band from Eagle Land was right behind me. There were snares, there was kick drums, there was ding a wing wings And I'm dribbling, I'm scribbling, baby, all over the court. If you go out there still on that half-court line, you'll see scratches in the court from where, I, from where I was playing. I was cutting the rug on that court. You thought it was a choreographed dance out there, papa. I was moving so much that everybody's heads was doing this. <laughs> they couldn't keep up with me. It looked like a Looney Tunes show. So I already pulled, I stepped back. I drug it, he slipped, he ain't fall. I went to the right, he pulled hard. I went back to the left. He thought I was gonna shoot it. He jumped it. I pulled it back down, stepped back right. I did a hezzy. His ankle kind of, you know, his you know, you ever tighten the bolt, but you ain't tighten it all the way, so it's kind of loose a little bit. That was his ankle. The Lord didn't tighten that bolt up all the way when he put him on the court with me. I tell you that right now. Bye-bye. And I tell you, grandma all that too. Daddy. So I pulled right, that little boat wasn't tight, so his ankle kind of his ankle kind of teeter-tottered like that thing on the playground back in third grade, fam, when you was hitting on a little Lucy from the lunchroom and you went and sat on the teeter-totter. That's what his ankle was doing. A little teeter-tottering. So I pulled. He went there. I hezzied. I stepped back. I stepped back up. And Ben was falling for all these moves, dude. It's like he had a crush on my moves because he was just falling for them. It's like he wanted to take my moves out on a date because he was just falling for every single one of them. And his ankles wasn't screwed on tight. And I pulled it back. And right, right as I went up, he finally caught word of his senses. His senses said, you need to block that shot. Because this is a dangerous man. This is Steph Corey on the court. Ba-ba! And I stepped up. And I remember it like slow motion, one of the greatest days of my life. Everybody, I think there was like 50, 55 people surrounding us. Everybody chanting my name. Corey. Corey. You can probably picture it in your head right now. Corey. Let your creative imagination just do it. Corey. And I went up in slow motion. I fully extended. Coach used to teach us to put our hand in the cookie jar. And that's exactly what I did. Coach, you'd be proud of me. I shot it. My hand, you probably can't see it in the camera. My hand went like this. I reached into the cookie jar, picked up a chocolate chip cookie. By the way, if you ever invite me to a party and you say, hey, Corey, over there on the kitchen, we got chocolate chip cookies, but they're actually oatmeal cookies. A chocolate chip cookie d- disguised as an oatmeal cookie cookie with raisins in it here's what's gonna happen if you ever invite me to a party and say Corey we got chocolate chip cookies over there but they're actually oatmeal cookies with raisins in them three things are gonna happen you're gonna notice that you can no longer find me on Instagram Facebook Snapchat or Twitter 
because you've been blocked. <laughs> okay. I Hakeem Bay Matumboed you. I blocked you. I blocked you. No, 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 no. Not today. Not in my house. I blocked you on every single social media platform. That's the first thing that's going to happen. Number two, you're going to notice that every single spare key I've made while you were out of town on vacation is going to be returned to you under the front carpet of your house. I'm returning all your spare keys. I don't need them. I don't need to call on you anymore. Blocked on social media. Returned all your spare keys. Number three, I'm going back middle school, baby, and I'm toilet papering every single thing in your yard, cars, mailboxes, front trees, back trees, swimming pool, chimneys. I don't care. It's all getting TP'd. Anyways, I'm there and I shoot in slow motion. I reach my hand into the cookie jar. I pull out that delicious McDonald's heated up for 35 seconds in a microwave chocolate chip cookie, baby. And I pull it out and I and then I pull it out and the ball floats from half court. Ben tried to block it, but it barely went over his fingertips like a beautiful portrait that some rich dude paid, but actually a third grader drew it. And it went right over his fingertips. And the ball is just floating in the air. Ben, at this moment, the ball hadn't even gone in yet, but he's already realizing to his senses that it's going to go in. So he runs straight over to his fiance. He starts saying, I'm sorry. He starts apologizing, tell her how much he loves her because he doesn't want her to leave him and stuff because he just got sprayed. And the ball's floating. And it's going. I'm watching it because I already know that the Lord took my hand, baby. The Lord took my hand. And it was basically like JC himself shot the shot. And the ball's floating. Everybody's looking. Everybody's like this. Like they're trying to find an end to a rainbow because they know they're a pot of gold somewhere. And they're following it. And I swear when it hit it, there was a clash of symbols. That ball went in and all you heard was. Ch- Ben starts crying. My man is in tears. He's drowning in a puddle of, you know, what is that? Salt water. It comes out your eyes. Ben is drowning in his own tears. But he learned a valuable lesson that day. The moment that you step on the court with Steph, Corey, bad things, bad, bad things happen. You leave different. You know, you, if you're a pastor or you've been in church long enough, you've heard this phrase, God, let us leave different than we came in today. And that's what happened to Ben that day. Ben left different that day. And what happens is every time I see him now, I'll fake shoot and he'll flinch. We don't got to be at a basketball court. I don't even have to have a basketball in my hand. My hand could be empty. Phonetically speaking, my hand can be empty. And I'll just go and I'll fake shoot it and Ben will, ben will flinch. And I'll, I'll fake shoot it and Ben will go. And he'll flinch. And he'll have a Caesar. And he'll flinch because he remembers that day. That history was defined. That that five on five, one V one game was a defining moment in his life. That he lost. He didn't just lose the game, baby. He lost his dignity. Because I took it. It's not, I keep it in a, in a little glass case right above my bedroom door. And it's labeled Ben's Dignity. You ever notice that some of, the most, like, some of the most emotional moments you ever had as a kid is when you were watching WWE, and that's how the wrestlers got into the camera like that? John Cena. Let me tell you something, Mr. Cena. You're not going to come into my hometown of Green Bay, Connecticut. And take what's rightfully mine, that WWE Championship belt. Next Sunday at Elimination Chamber, two things are going to happen, Cena. I'm going to... I just stepped on my dog's toy. I'm going to come into that arena, Cena. That arena, Cena. And I'm going to pin you down to the ground. And there are going to be three numbers that are called out, Cena. One, two, three, Cena. That's how every wrestler... I, I wanted to be a wrestler for so long in my life. My brother crushed my dreams early. My brother, I remember I used to, I was opening up to him one time and I said, we, I call him Bo. His name is James. I call him Bo my whole life. Don't look up Bo on Facebook because you ain't going to find him. And I, I, I came up to him one day and I said, Bo, you know how much I love wrestling. I think I'm going to be a wrestler. I think I really want to start training hard to be a wrestler. And he looked at my young infant 14 year old mind. He looked me right in the eyes and he said, Corey, You'll never be a wrestler. From that day, I was like, man, I got to prove this guy wrong. So it's still in my thing, but I don't think I could be a wrestler. And here's why. Every wrestler has a steroid voice. 
but like a, a scary steroid voice. Like every wrestler sounds like they did hard prison time. Like, oh, you didn't know. Oh, you're in the wrong backyard, boy. Oh, you strangled upon the wrong yard. And here's why I know I couldn't be a wrestler is because I don't have that voice. I have way too nice of a voice. Like, if I used my natural voice and I wanted to be a wrestler and I was talking to John Cena, here's what it would sound like. John Cena! You've stepped on the wrong guy's toes, Mr. Cena. I have an ingrown toe. And you stepped on it and now it's hurting, baby. But guess what? That pain isn't wasted. Because next Monday night at the Royal Rumble, me, you, and WWE Championship on the line, Mr. Cena. And all the crowd would do was just make fun of me. So I really had to go get my vocal box either replaced or taken out or, you know, even put like a, you know, you've seen those smokers where you can't hear them because they had their throat taken out. So the, if they don't have their thing in, they sound like this. Like they're doing that uh, that old thing in, in the war where you click. But if they do have that thing in, they sound like. That's what I need to replace in my throat so I can sound intimidating, baby. I don't know if you've ever been to a train station, but you've been to a intimidation station if you came in my backyard. Papa. I'll tell anybody that. I'll tell you grandma that straight to her old eyes. So um, I don't know how long we've been going here. It uh, feels like five minutes, but a lot of times my time calculator is off. I don't do the right math, but... Um, I would love to have been in, in studio one day, my game room. I would love to have been in studio so we could talk about that amazing shot, um, how much trauma he's gone through, how much, um, you know, uh, uh, what is it called? When you go seek help, how much, uh, what's that word? When you go and seek help, how, yeah, how much trauma he's gone through and how much counseling he's gone through from that shot that day. So anyways, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I'm gonna leave you with three things. Jesus loves you, and that's what it is. And if you're feeling far away from him, baby, he never moved, and he's right there with wide open arms. You ever thought about Creed? You ever heard that song with arms wide open? With arms wide open, under the sunlight, welcome to you. So he's right there with, with arms wide open waiting for you to come back. Just straight up running up prodigal son. So I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far into the video, honestly, kudos to you. Um, I'm surprised anybody's watching this, to be honest. So I'm grateful for every single viewer. I love you so much. Um, and uh, as always, you know, if you ever feel lonely, reach out to me. I'd love to uh, let you know that somebody loves you make you feel wanted. And if you need a church to go to, you can always come to mine. Um, that's it for this episode. Take care, and I will see you guys next week. See you later, Papa. Papa con chili, chorizo con huevo, barbacoa, pastor. See you later. Falling down.